All right, all, and welcome back. Long time no see. First video in a while. First video since the Punch Stain Festival previews. And I suppose you guys probably know it at this stage. I'm not a, a massive flat racing connoisseur. I'm not particularly confident on putting up tips for flat racing. And I don't particularly enjoy watching it. I play quite a lot of cricket in the summer, so therefore in on weekends I'm not really watching as much racing as I would over the winter. But I thought it was Guinea's weekend. It's Guinea's weekend in Ireland this week. Um, some very good cards at the Curra. There's also a good card at Haydock on Saturday. And I decided just I'm going to go through the big races, obviously including the two Guineas. Starting off with the 2,000 Guineas, which has been added a heap of extra spice now that too darn hot is going to come over and run for John Gosden, having come second in the Dante Stakes only last week. Magna Grecia is still around even money, having won the Guineas and has kind of the proven form in the book. Um, I suppose, though, at least, you know, if, if you're a fan of Magna Grecia and you fancy him to beat too darn hot, now the price is all right. For you to go and back it because he looked like he might be a one to two shot or a four to six shot at least in this race but also you've got the likes of scar do in there who was a bit unlucky perhaps in the guineas phoenix of spain was a very good two-year-old chalier has been very impressive for dermot weld old glory was beat was purchased for a bloody ton son of frankel so there's an awful lot going on in this race it should be a really good and informative race uh, come the end of it however i just can't get past too darn hot in this race and i didn't think i'd say this but after jewers last year because i was kind of against him for the majority of his two-year-old campaign but after the jewers i was just so taken aback by it his run in the dante was all right um i don't think he just didn't I don't think he didn't get home. I think just that sort of trip obviously did stretch him. And therefore the last furlong wasn't his quickest. And Telecaster is a stout stayer. I think Telecaster is probably a mile four horse. Two Darn Hot's probably a mile horse. And they ran over a mile two. So I think Two Darn Hot here. I don't know about that guinea's form. I would be much... I would much prefer to keep backing the horses on the other side. To be honest. So Scardu was third. Ma Moon four. Ten Sovereigns fifth. I think they could be the three horses to take out of that guineas this year. Magna Grecia was good. But I couldn't be backing him at anything like even money. Scardu probably has a good each way chance. Uh, he's five or six to one. It's not a great each way price to be honest. And therefore I won't be putting it up. Hopefully... A lot, of, a lot of bookmakers will go at least four places in this race, even though it's not a four-place race in terms of the amount of runners. But hopefully they will do. And I like one that's probably going to be, you know, a double-figure price. And it's a horse called Decrypt for Paddy Toomey, uh, owned by the trainer himself. And he's two from three, this son of Dark Angel, having won a cork on reappearance really well. He's a big grey horse. And Paddy Toomey, obviously, not many people would know of him. He doesn't have that many horses in training. But in the last two weeks, he's had five runners, three winners. So he obviously knows how to get these horses right. He's got a horse in the 1,000 guineas that I'll come on to as well. And this is a great flagship horse for him. And Decrypt, hopefully, can go well in this race. The other races, we don't have the full um, declarations in for yet. So it's going to be a lot harder. In the Lan Wad stud stakes. Gee, that's probably terribly pronounced. But anyway, that, that race, I can fly if it runs. I think we'll win. Uh, she ran a nice race in the lock inch last week. But will she come and run again? I'm not so sure. And if she wasn't running, Yulong Gull Ferry probably is the answer. The Greenland stakes is a tough group too. Uh, over six furlongs. St. Patrick's Day was a very odd horse last year. He never really got it together. You always felt he could, though. Uh, so I wouldn't give him no shout. And Smash Williams is a very consistent horse for Jim Bulger. Uh, is probably a fairly solid each way bet. In the big races on Haydock, uh, the Sandy Lane Stakes, I can't see past Calix. Um, it's only a four-runner race. 
he seems to be much the best. The Temple Stakes, I have always been a massive fan of Batash. I just love, um, as I say, there's not that much about flat racing that would get me kind of giddy, but those seriously fast horses. Like, if you can't get excited by them, you're in the wrong game, to be honest. And Batash is an absolute speeder. Um, wasn't at his best last year. So hopefully, I saw, an, I saw an interview with Charlie Hills, I think it was last week, saying that they thought he was back to his best. And hopefully he is, because he's a wonder horse when he gets going. And in the, what's it called now? The Britain Stallion Stud Cecil Frail. Uh, listed race I think there's a horse for William Haggis here called Island of Life who's been very consistent and also Aidan Fogarty an Irish trainer sends over Forever in Dreams who was a smart French horse as a two year old ran quite well on a stable start last time out and hopefully will come forward for that and then on to the Sunday there's only really two major races on the Sunday uh, the 1000 guineas Hermosa, obviously the winner of the 1,000 guineas, is favourite. I don't think I'd be backing, him, backing her, to be honest. I think there's much uh, better prices in there. I, I'd take one more chance on Ira Dessa. I was desperately disappointed with her at um, Newmarket. I thought she'd go really close in the 1,000 guineas. Never showed. Perhaps she does need further than a mile, but I think at 7-1 to one, it's worth an each-way crack. And as I was saying, Paddy Toomey is another in this race, and it's Foxtrot Liv, who's been a very, very good horse. Won over the mile last time out, showing that uh, the horse stayed well. And um, hopefully, hopefully can go well. Uh, that's a big price, 33 to 1. And the Gold Cup, uh, there's no prices in, but I'm assuming Magical will be short. Uh, I don't know what other O'Brien horse is going to run against them. Or against her even, uh, but if Magic Wand turned up, uh, Magic Wand's a, a good horse in her own right, was third over in America last time out in the Man of War, which was a tricky enough race, so she could go close to giving Magical a bit of a scare. The only other one at the Curra on the Sunday I would just pay attention to is the Two Mile Boodles Handicap. I do quite like the Staying Flat Handicap because there's so many... Um, jump sources in it but Mr Everest I think is a very smart flat horse and potentially still has a bit in hand with the handicapper if he goes to post I think he's got a very good chance anyway if you did enjoy this video please do give it a like it's great to be back making videos and I'll try to do so more regularly over the summer uh, do give it a like subscribe to the channel down below and of course give me what you feel about these guineas races do you think Magna Grecia is now overpriced because of Too Darn Hot's inclusion. Or like me, do you think Too Darn Hot is just too darn good? Let me know.